Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pera Roca Cavarrocas. I am scientific director at IPVF. It is my pleasure to be here today and to discuss with you about the state of the art and challenges of emerging solar cell technologies in Europe. To start, let's look at the big picture. The big picture is what is the energy systems in the coming years. And for that, we have different associations which are making a scenarios on how the energy production will evolve. The energy mix will change. And that's what shows this uh, graph where we have the shell scenario. In this graph, you see that fossil fuels are going through a maximum and their decrease is going to be taken over by renewable energies. And among those energies, in particular, solar energy, wind is also there, but solar energy is going to take the main part of the, of the share. Let's look in detail to the bottom of the figure. And here you can see that for the, between the 90s and 2000, where solar energy seems to be flat, in fact, it has been increasing exponentially. And we have gone from 50 megawatts in around 1990 to one gigawatt today. So this is more than a factor of 1,000 increase and now if we want to meet the COP21 scenario, if we want to keep the temperature of, on our planet at two degrees below the pre-industrial area, then what we need is to increase the, the energy by a fa production by PV by a factor of 60. So there is still a way to, uh, way to go, but you, you can see that we have done already a big uh, step forward. In their report of 2021, just uh, released, the International Energy Agency uh, forecast that PV will be the main energy uh, source and uh, so we are entering in the area of King PV. So the figure here now shows an uh, image of how it would look like the energy scenario in 2050. And what you see is that we have photovoltaics in the center of the system, but of course there is much more behind that. And uh, in particular you can think about uh, having PV on uh, agriculture, and this is, uh, has to, we will see later on that it has its face, PV is facing land uh, usage, so combining PV and agriculture makes sense. We can also have uh, floating PV, and of course, building integrated photovoltaics. All this is to say that, in fact, what we are going towards is that all surfaces can produce energy, and PV is a way to make all the surfaces energy produ producers. What's the situation of Europe in the energy installations? The figure in the, in the table, what you have is, you can see that Europe, in fact, is the second installer of PV around the world. You have the uh, PV modules installed, or, uh, accumulated installed PV, and Europe is number two. So that's already, we can be happy about that. Uh, we see also that in the graph on the right that there are up and downs, but uh, the fact is that 2020, 2019, the curve is going up again. So I would say we have green light for photovoltaics. And of course, now we have to look, the next step is to check where is all, these, all, the, all those PV modules come from. And you are aware they come from uh, Asia, most of them. But if you look to the Europe, infrastructures, companies, research institutes, uh, universities, there is plenty of activity on photovoltaics. And the point is that all those activities are sometimes not enough cross-linked, uh, interconnected. And this was one of the things that we realized at APVF. There is a need to gather all together and to go to talk to Europe, to European Commission, and to make sure that PV is a priority for the energy in Europe. That led to the launch of the call for action Solar Europe Now, which gathered all the companies that you have here, more than 100 institutes from different countries, 15 countries in Europe. Now, what I want to highlight in this slide is that in, for crystalline silicon, which is the leading technology today in Europe, where we have all the value chain, we have silicon producers, we have cell producers, module, system, so everything is available and everything, everything I would say, is ready to make it a real industry. And in fact, in recent months, end of 2020, beginning 2021, we have seen many announcements from companies 
increasing production. It's the case of Enel in Italy, Morgan in Germany, Greenland in Spain. So we are talking now about building up factories which can produce five gigawatts of PV modules every year. So the real question is, what about emerging technology? We have seen crystalline silicon is there, it's going to continue, but what's next? And on that respect, we can take a look to the, as this NRL chart. And what this uh, chart shows is that photovoltaics is a very dynamic research industry, and there is room for improvement and to do much better than what we are doing currently today. The high efficiency, we know the solution. The high efficiency is to go to tandem devices to couple two materials to get above 30% efficiency, which is the current limit of crystalline silicon technologies. So in this chart of NRL, I would like to focus on a few technologies. And one of them, of course, you have heard about, it's perovskite solar cells. It has been showing a skate rocket progress in energy efficiencies. We have also the 3.5 materials, which have record efficiencies today, 47%. And the question is now how we bring these technologies to the industry and to make to use them to make products. To make products, we have many challenges, and in particular, we are thinking about 60 terawatts, uh, 80 terawatts of production. These, the challenges we are going to face are related to the materials, to the use of land, and to the recycling. So for the materials, the first thing we need for ter terawatt production is to have abundant materials. In the graph on the left, you have the abundance of different materials, and you can see that silicon, for example, is abundant in the earth crust, and from that point of view, crystalline silicon technology has no worries. Second aspect is that those materials have to be cheap, and uh, if they are abundant, in general, they are cheap. Then we have to move to the next step, and which is how you make devices, how do you make cells and modules out of the materials. This is all the processing steps. And on that respect, maybe processing silicon industry can do better. We are relying on processes which are 50 years old, and all the thin thing technologies, they claim, they expect to lower the cost because they should, in principle, allow for more efficient processes. So it is important to develop processes which are efficient, which consume low quantities of materials, and also which uh, those materials in particular are not uh, nocive to the environment. So we, we, have, we need to take care about the environmental impact. And for example, today there are some questions about the use of lead in perovskite solar cells, uh, arsenic if we are on 3.5s. So those are things which the PV industry and starting from the research laboratory has to take into account in order to develop multi-terawatt industry, which doesn't affect in a negative way our environment. At the end, uh, what we have is we have 50 gigawatts, 50 terawatts. We have a, a huge, insane amount of PV modules around. Of course, we'll have to recycle them. We will have to reuse them. And if possible, we'll, we want to reduce the amount. So reducing the amount of materials, this again goes towards thin films. If we can make the crystalline silicon wafers thinner and thinner, and we develop processes, we develop schemes which allow to trap the light in very narrow slabs of crystalline silicon material, then we can solve of the challenges of materials usage, recycling, abundance, and so on. So if we take the, the conclusion, I would say from this slide is that Silicon, for sure, is a material which has, can meet the terawatt challenge. Probably better if we make it thin, and if we want to make it more efficient, probably better even if we can combine it with other materials. And here we have talking about tandem solar cells, be it with perovskite, be it with 3.5, maybe with CIGS. There are many options, and that's what which makes the richness and which makes us to think that we have challenges but we have many approaches, many solutions to face those challenges. We have challenges and we are chances, and the chances, as I said, we have different approaches which allow us to go for more efficient devices, 
above 30 percent and if we look to the just uh, the recent uh, horizon europe call for proposals we see that there are many calls which tackle this issue we have calls on making tandem perovskite on silicon solar cells we have call a call on new thin film materials we have a call which is addressing the issue of processing manufacturability the 4.0 factories where you can produce in a very efficient way high quantities, terawatt, gigawatt quantities of PV modules at low cost, which can produce affordable energy for everybody. So to conclude, I would say that the situation in Europe is changing. We have seen that market is growing, but more important, and that's what we are, we are discussing today, is that the industry is coming back. We have seen that Meyer Burger, NL, Greenland are here, are building up increasing capacity, going to 5 gigawatt, and that's what we need to supply to the European market, and hopefully also to export and to become producers of PV for the world. Moreover, if you look to the uh, research part, we have seen that there are plenty of choices. We can increase the efficiency of the solar cells going towards toward tandem devices, and by doing that, we will be able to decrease even further the cost of PV electricity and making it available for everybody. So for, as a conclusion, I would say that the sun is shining bright again in Europe. Thank you for your attention.